Hello and welcome back to channel 7.5 in the Minds Network. As you may have heard last week, Marcus Timbro walked into his work office with a shotgun and pistol, killing 24 of his co-workers. Our reporter John Smith was able to have an interview with Thomas Hartman, the man that put an end to it all. Hello Thomas and thank you for joining us today. Thank you for having me, it's a pleasure. Yeah. So last week a man named Marcus Timbra entered into your office and shot up 24 of your co-workers, is that correct? Yes, that is correct. And what was he like? Uh, Marcus was actually just a very quiet guy, uh, really kept to himself every on the work days. Um, he was very organized, everything in his office space was just for work purposes only. He had no pictures or nothing that w did not serve the simple purpose of allowing him to complete his job. Uh, he was very time oriented. He showed up to work every day at the same time, break same time, lunch, bathroom, when he left, everything was at the same time. Uh, and like I said, he really kept to himself. So, and whenever he would eat lunch or any of these things, uh, they were the same every day, and he he never wanted to sit with anyone. I mean, we would ask him um, if he would like to join any of us, but he would say no, and it, sometimes it felt like he was annoyed by it, so finally we just kind of stopped asking, and he was completely fine and content with that. He seems like a guy that just had a routine, but uh, maybe he was depressed. Did he seem depressed to you? Not at all. He showed up to work every day, like he like with this kind of excited look, or you know, happy to be doing his job. Um, and at the end of every day, he left with the f expression of gratification or accomplishment for the day. So this week, ha this event happened last week at your office. Uh, can you um, describe a little bit to us? Uh, it was just like any other work day. I uh, showed up. You know, it was in the morning, so not everyone had just started yet. Um, some of them were still standing and talking. Some of us had already sat down. Uh, I was just sitting down myself um, when all of a sudden, uh, like, well, we had kind of a little bit before noticed that Marcus wasn't there, which is why we thought it was odd. Uh, because as you could tell from his previous personality, the personality yeah. I just described, he follows a routine. Yeah, he should have been there. He was always there. So we thought, oh, maybe he's sick. It happens or got into a car accident. He'll call in. None of us had his number because of his private life. So we wouldn't know and uh all of a sudden he comes in and uh pulls out a pistol and just started shooting everyone that was standing mm. uh then he kind of just stepped forward and started shooting the shotgun once the clip had emptied um into every cubicle as he walked down uh with this like very gazed look kind of like he was just doing it like he didn't even like he wasn't there himself it was just kind of happening did he look furious? Did he seem like he was, ye was he yelling and running around? No, he just kind of walked in. So he didn't even like b kick open the doors or anything. And as he walked down the aisle, he just was walking very like at an even pace, gaze look like he wasn't there himself. So what did you do? Uh, so as he was walking down the aisle, I was just kind of like thinking, oh my God, something's got to, someone's got to try to stop this. You know, I was kind of flustered and I was praying that I would get the courage to like get up and stop this. And I kind of like leaned out of my desk since he was just going one by one. It wasn't like he was shooting in front of him anymore. And I looked and he had this glazed look on his face and all of a sudden he stopped. And so I thought, OK, this is the time that I need to stand up and try to get him out of this state of mind that he was in because he wasn't himself. And so I stood up and I told him, Marcus, I need you to look at me. And he just kind of stopped and was looking forward like as if he were thinking and I said really loudly this time, I like demanded, I was like, Marcus, you need to look at me. And he finally came conscious and this look upon his face came that was not that glazed look. It was um, a look of like I was bothering him while he was working or something. And he said, he just said, what, what do you want? And I said, I need you to relax and put down the gun. And he looked down at his hands and this look came across his face like he was shocked he had the gun himself. Mm. And then he looked he looked right up and he just kind of stared at me and this sigh of relief came upon his face like, okay, he hadn't done anything wrong yet because he hadn't killed anyone in front. He, there was no one in front of him that he noticed was dead. And um, all of a sudden, I, someone must have called the cops when it started happening. It felt like it happened so fast. I don't know how they got there so quickly, but 
um, some man said, take the shot now, take the shot now. So I froze because I wasn't going to get in the way of whoever was firing a gun. And he kind of stepped forward just saying, no, 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 no. Like, because he didn't think he had done anything yet. And he fell forward. Was this Mr. Timbro? Mm-hmm. He tripped over someone he had shot that was laying right in front of him on his feet. And, um, and so when he fell, he kind of looked back and he was he just looked like all of a sudden he realized what he had done and this look upon his face of like disgust and sorrow for what he had done. Like, and he looked like he just was despised, like despised himself almost. So at that moment when you saw his face, how did you feel? Well, it, when, when he came, once all of a sudden the cops came in and they handcuffed him and he, he looked like he was like most people in that situation, you know, if they did something wrong, they would think, oh, yeah, they didn't shoot mm -hmm. me. And now I might have a way out, please yeah. sanity or something. But he had this look on his face like he was sad that they didn't kill him. Wow. So this feeling was just kind of like I, it took me a while to gather all my thoughts, but it felt, you know, like he had just killed a bunch of my friends or coworkers and, you know, I hate him for that and then at the same time it felt like it he wasn't himself so at the same time I feel kind of like a sorrow or pity for him mm. well Marcus is going to go on a trial next week and um, going to be tried most likely for to go to death row um, what are your thoughts on that well based on the look upon his face of you know how he looked like he wanted to die if if if, if he finds peace in wanting that I'm sure he'll most likely plead guilty, and I hope that he finds peace in that manner. But um, overall, I just hope that justice is found and that he gets this sense of peace. Well, Thomas, thank you very much for your time today, and I hope everything goes well for you during this process. Thank you for having me. All right, have a good day. Well, that's all we have for you this evening. This is Timothy Hopkins saying goodnight. You stay classy, Art Institute.